Hey, I am back with another resin test. This one today is the Epax Hard Resin. If anyone follows me on Facebook, you've seen a lot of posts with this resin because it's what I've been using exclusively in my Epax X1K because this resin is formulated for monoscreen printers. And what does that mean? I don't know the chemistry of it. I wasn't involved with the chemistry, but it's a slower curing resin. So on normal machines, you wouldn't want to use it because if let's say you had a normal resin like Soraya Fast Gray or Elegoo Gray, and let's say you were curing it on whatever your machine was at, so let's say a 12 second layer time. If you use this resin, your layer time is like 18 seconds. You wouldn't want that on an older tech printer on a, on a color LCD screen, that would mean you'd have 18 seconds on, and unless you set off a very high light off delay, only a few seconds off and 18 seconds on, it's gonna burn out your screen quickly. So I recommend resins like this for what it's formulated for, which is monoscreen printers, because the layer time I'm able to print um, with this at just 2.5 seconds per layer on the Epax X1K. So it's a perfect pairing with it. Uh, it's a high detail resin and high resolution resin. And what does that mean? Because resolution, you're usually talking about your LCD screen, not your resin. What I mean by high resolution in a resin is a resin that as it cures, light bleed doesn't affect the surrounding resin as much so you don't lose a lot of the detail as you print. So it comes out a little sharper, a little clearer. And anyone knows if you've used different resins, even once you get totally dialed in, all resins don't print the same. So I'm still gonna call it resolution for these, uh, for these resins as I'm doing my reviews of everything. So the Epax Hard, again, you only wanna use it if, right now if you have a Sonic Mini. If you have an Epax X1K, awesome print drive review, I'll check it out here. Um, the Elegoo Saturn coming out, the Frozen uh, 4K, which I'm really excited to test. I can't wait to get my hands on one I pre-ordered, so look for a review of that. But th those, the, the, these new tech printers, that's what this Epex Hard was made for. It's not very smelly. Uh, it's low, what I would call low odor. It's high resolution. I, in fact, I like it so much, I've been test printing uh, the figures for my upcoming Kickstarter, which I'll link a few here so you can see some of the pictures already of what the resin looks like but it holds the detail great, everything's super sharp, super clear. That's a product of good resin, but also the, the Epax X1K is an awesome printer, and it's a 2K mono screen, so it's, it's pretty great. So what, what you know I'm gonna have is I always use the same model to test my resins, so it's, it's very easy for me to make fair comparisons, and I'll have high-res photos of her coming up. Um, I have a bunch of resin uh, reviews coming. Unfortunately, I lost, I done break tests like on the spear that I did with this. I usually do a spear and then break it. I lost my break test for a bunch of the resins I tested. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened to the data. I can't even remember actually now, but I lost my break test. So that that's slowed me down a little bit. But what I'm gonna do anyway, I think going forward, because it's one thing to break a piece with my hands that shows you something, but I think it's important to see how things survive a drop. So I'm gonna introduce serious drop tests. And if they don't break when I drop it, I'm gonna throw it, right? I, I'm gonna make it break. One thing, when we do all these break tests and drop tests later, um, one thing we're not gonna hold against any resin is I guarantee when I drop her, she's gonna pop off the base because she's just being held on by super glue. But I also think at her wrist, where the hammers attach at the wrist, those are gonna snap off because in my experience with all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and maybe thousands of miles I've printed and glued. Anytime I do get a break from dropping a figure, it always seems to be where I glued it. So my theory, and I'm sure some chemists out there can back this up hopefully for me in the comments, that the super glue interacting with the plastic makes it super brittle there. And so whenever I drop, so I assume when I do the drop test, both hammers are gonna snap right off. I'm not gonna care about that. What I'm gonna be looking for, she has some tiny thin details like her hair, I want to know what does it take to break this resin, uh, even the thin, small part like the hair. That's what we're going to be looking for to really see how strong the resin is, not how does it hold up to being weakened by super glue. Um, because if you want a strong bond and you don't want the glue to weaken your model, uh, you start doing what I've been doing lately, which is use a drop of resin and a UV flashlight to cure it, and then you've got a super strong bond made out of the same material so it's not weakened by glue. So anyway. I have to go take pictures of her before I throw her around and break her. I don't want to forget to have my pictures done so you see what she looks like in high res. Um, and because I've been using this resin so much, not just testing it, I'll, on this one I'm going to have a few pictures of, of other figures I've done so you can really get a feel for how this resin prints out and holds detail. 
and it's 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 really good resin. I think. I mean, it's it's really holds detail well. I'm very happy with this resin. And in fact, I'm so happy with it. I have been using it exclusively in my Epax X1K. I'm getting such good results. I honestly don't even want to switch or test resins in that machine. I'm actually just going to keep using this Epax hard, uh, you know, kind of basically forever, I guess, unless unless some other resin wows me like so over the top because I have this one really dialed in. So unless something really like knocks my socks off in this machine, I'm just going to stick with this resin most likely. Anyway, let's uh, let's come back in a second, a second of your time, a lot longer for me. We'll be back in a second and we'll throw her around and see what it takes to bust her up. Okay, Matt. Now, here's a little piece. I had I had broken this before I started the camera. Duh. Um, set everything else and forgot to play. So all, even though it's already broken, I'm going to break this little piece just to see. Okay, so not that flexible, the Epax Art. But it's also strong. That took a lot of force to break. So let's see what that means. So I don't know what's a good drop height. Like I said, I have a feeling our hammers are going to go flying when I do this and the base. But let's, let's just do this first. See? Shattered. Right? That, that, that shattered it. And I was right to hammers and everything. But... One arm came off actually. So that, and she didn't come off the base, which I, I thought her feet would break. So none of the fine details broke, which is weird. I think the force of her arm being out and the hammer being attached to it, but it did break. So let's, let's keep going. Okay, no further breakage. Whoa. Okay, doesn't look like anything. <laughs> Further broke there. Uh, yeah, my table's going though. Because I didn't always lock your legs on a table. I didn't bother to do that. So let's see. That was a pretty good fall. Uh, still nothing else broke. And let's go get that. Excuse my giant head for a second. So still. Still the hair didn't break and the other arm didn't break. Nothing else seems to have broken. What if I just slam it on the hair? I heard something that time. So slamming it on the, oh no. Wait, oh yeah. One of the little tips broke off the hair when I slammed it down. So that's actually a mixed bag. Like this one arm broke off. Maybe it's just the way it landed, but it did break what I would call, you know, didn't survive. I just threw it up. What? And ended up going up three, four feet and then down onto a hard table. Um, but then after that, it was hard to, to get more break. Let me see if I can break the rest of her hair off by like really forcefully. Yep, I heard a click. Yeah, okay. So if you, <laughs> well, it makes sense. If you throw it down hard, uh, you can break the fine details off. Uh, but the other arm, let me see that other arm. Okay, this, the rest of it's holding up pretty good. Again, let me try to see if I can really get that arm. Oh, there it goes. That was a good shot, I guess. You slam it 10 times in a row, it's going to break. So now she looks like Venus de Milo with the no arms. But you know what's funny? Aside from the hair tips breaking off and then I broke both arms, like generally she's in pretty good shape there. I'm just like, sorry. I just decided to see if I could break her. I can't uh, I can break her off the base. <clears throat> Oh, these thicker parts are a little... I'm going to squeeze her legs see how that should break, right? Let's see how that goes. Ah, okay. Pretty significant force needed to snap her leg off. Okay, so that's, that's my brake test. You know, you guys can judge for yourself whether you think that's durable or not. Um, I'm disappointed the first arm came off with it on the first toss. But after that, the rest of it seemed like incredibly durable. I mean, you saw what I had to do to break stuff. And yeah, well, right, let's break the other leg off. Okay, that, that one came off, maybe I've been pressing on before, that one came off easier, it felt like. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I don't know what to call that. Uh, Semi-durable? I mean, I think if you, just under normal handling, it'll be fine, obviously. Um, and if you drop it, from what I just saw, a drop onto a hard surface might be hit or miss whether you actually break anything. It might just depend on the way it lands and what actually hits down. But, like I say, usually where I glue stuff on... And you're almost guaranteed to break, you know, uh, at the glued parts. That's why I actually start recommending now whenever you can, 
use resin to weld your pieces together. I think it's a lot better than a glue that weakens those pieces. So, so keep that in mind. And if you haven't seen, I have a video on that. Maybe if I can link it here, I'll put it up floating above my head somewhere so you can just see how to do that. Um, so that's it for my Epax hard resin. I honestly, I do the brake test for you guys. I tend to be not to be very clumsy with my miniatures and I kind of handle them with care. So for me, as long as something isn't super brittle, uh, I'm not that concerned with it. Like I've been playing these, I've been test playing these figures in my game and, you know, for the Kickstarter and just for like normal handling, knocking them over, you know, whatever, you're, you're, you're not breaking this resin, you know, with, with a normal action. You, you have to get a little more extreme. And so since I didn't do, I don't do that for me personally, I like to go for a red, like this e packs hard because the resolution on it isn't, you know, is really good. It's giving me some really crisp, clear prints, as you can see. So for me, if, if you consider that to be a little brittle, to me, that doesn't matter. But I know to some people, some people are pretty rough on it, or maybe kids are playing with it. So you have to be, you know, more concerned with breakage. But the e packs hard overall, um, I have to say that I love it personally. And I'm, like I said, I'm just going to keep using it in my e packs XK1 because the pairing seems to give me, like I did a video on it, the pairing gave me the best mini I ever printed. And it's generally given me amazing results. So I'm, I'm one of those, I'm gonna experiment for you guys and do whatever, but on that machine, I'm not going to really because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm getting perfect prints out of it. I, I really don't feel like messing with it to be honest. So for me, uh, at least for that printer, and, and I'm gonna, you know, when I get my Saturn, my Elegoo Saturn in, when I get my Frozen, 4k which i'm really excited 4k small screen so theoretically should give me prints you know double the resolution of of uh of loading off the x1k so we'll see if that really happens you know come check me out for the review there because you know i'm gonna re i'm gonna test it to death have lots of high-res pictures and, and give you the the truth on on how it works so that's it for my epex epex hard uh resin gray color i didn't mention the color it's gray which that's the other thing since most of us have that ever-growing pile of plastic shame, uh, I actually also like, aside from the fact that I take photos to show you guys and gray shows up well, I like a resin that when you just put it down on the table, you can see, you know, some resolution. And even without painting it, because I now have like a zillion unpainted minis, but when I plop one of these down with this resin, it picks up the light. It, it, it shows shadows and highlighting naturally. So... Uh, it, it, it looks good unpainted, which for me is important in a resin because, like I said, 99% of my stuff now is unpainted when I play with it, whether it's D&D &D or even my own Kickstarter game or whatever. Uh, so it needs to look good just sitting on the table, you know, natural resin color. So that's another thing I like. This is like a nice dark gray color. Really, really looks good on the table. So anyway, that's it. I will uh, link this somewhere. Uh, as I'm finishing up making this video, I'll also reach out to Epax and see if I can get you guys some kind of coupon. So hopefully I did that, I don't know. Um, but you'll, if, if I did get you a coupon, I guess I can insert a box here after I make the video saying coupon. And then in the, in the description, hopefully the coupon will be there if they give me one. I don't know if they will, but hopefully they will. I, I'd like to get you guys a good price on this resin, especially with all the mono printers coming out soon. This is the kind of resin especially for those screens, this is the kind of resin you want to buy. So if I can get you a coupon, I would advise you to kind of like stock up on it a little bit. So when you get your new mono screen and you print like crazy, you'll have this good resin to do it. Uh, and that's it. Hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. And I'll be back with, I have a lot of, you see, I have a lot of bags here because I've been testing a lot of resins and I got backed up with making videos. So I didn't get to do all these reviews. So now I'm going to do them one by one. Um, We've got El Elegu ABS like, um, we've got a Merrill Labs resin, Aerion. I don't know if I'm saying that right, Aerion resin. I just got in some Monocure resin, which I did not hear because I didn't test it yet. So I'm gonna have a bunch of resin reviews for you guys. Uh, hopefully, you know, I know availability of resins is different in different countries, so I'm trying to review as much stuff as possible so that, you know, people who watch my channel, you know, you'll get reviews that are applicable, applicable applicable to where you are and what you can actually get. You want to watch, just watch reviews of stuff that you can't get in your country. So anyway, stay tuned for my further reviews and happy 3D printing everyone.